Welcome to the GMI Hub Online. We today have an incredible topic. We're talking about children's ministry, and our friend Judy Vankovich is here. She's been in children's ministry for years. We'll get Cheryl to tell you more about her, and I'll just introduce myself. My name is Dale Borland. And welcome, everybody. So glad to see you here, and welcome, Judy. Judy is an award-winning songwriter and, and singer, and her focus is on children. She is known as Judy the Manners Lady, as you can see from her background here. She is the Manners Lady. She, she ministers in churches, um, in schools. She's had many opportunities even around the world to minister, and she's also an author. I have four, but one's thing uploaded right what? away to uh, Amazon, just praying. <laughs> yeah, so she's got some books. Welcome. Judy, so glad to have you on here. Um, great conversation we had earlier, and you're such a fireball. I'm so excited to hear more, <laughs> more about what you do for writing songs for kids. <laughs> so tell us about your story, uh, the, the, the Manners Lady, how it came about, and the journey that you took to get there. Well, I love this. Dale, what a great treat to have a reunion with you. I am, <laughs> first, I want to say I am so proud of you. I oh, met you through your kids' radio show. And it was totally cool. And I want to just kudos to you and Virginia and reaching our children. So I loved being on your radio show then and let's get that going in. So anyway, <laughs> I just love kids, you know, growing up as a teenager, I, I was teaching Sunday school, you know, as um, a fifth grader. And so I grew up at Chartwell Baptist Church, uh, Calvary Baptist in Woodbridge and Chartwell Baptist Oakville and Streetsville Baptist Church in Mississauga. And as a kid, it was just natural to be sign up to teach Sunday school because then you got to eat the children's cookies. Yep. Right? Exactly. It was just a natural thing to do. Even as a, uh, my mother taught child evangelism backyard Bible clubs. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm just going to show you this and I don't know who happens to be listening, but here's our little surprise. How many of you grew up with this song? Yeah. Stop. And let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. You know, lots of people know that. What about this one? Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm. And dare to make it known. You know, and this one was always really fun. I met Jesus at the crossroads. That was a fun one. Or even the kids love this one. The countdown song that coming through the clouds and right away the countdown's getting lower every day that jesus yeah. is coming down. it's great those kind of songs help and put the words in the mind and the hearts of the children and it's great to have that in their in their yes. memory yeah that's what i had and they're with me forever and now of course i then i taught my children these these, these songs because the songs had purpose uh -huh. they weren't just silly songs although i love larry boy's silly songs there's a place for the silly songs there's a place for camp songs and there's a place for being intentional mm -hmm. with doctrine mm -hmm. you know one of the kids songs i don't have that one right here but it was the apostles creed set to music you know what do we believe as christians and get our kids grounded so that's what i was raised with i'm thankful for my mom that was intentional even as a fifth grader as a sixth grader i went to sunday school training classes to learn how to be a better Sunday school teacher, how to share a Bible verse, how to share your testimony, how to tell a child how they can, you know, um, have a relationship with Christ. You know, I think we called it asking Jesus into your heart, you know, well, how can Jesus fit in there? But, you know, he isn't, you know, he wants to live in our life, live big in our life. And my mother, do I have one here? She, you knew Grandma Margaret Dale. Yeah, so was. my mother... She used to say, pretend your life, and this is such a great visual, is like a, a glove, and the glove is sitting there on the table, and that's your life, and Jesus, the Holy Spirit, wants to come in and fill that glove and use it for a purpose, mm -hmm. and, and this is what we um, use for children as well. It's called Fuzzy Wuzzy Heart, <laughs> and Fuzzy Wuzzy Heart, God wants to help you to be a fuzzy wuzzy heart in people's lives, not a cold prickly, but Jesus wants to come and use your hands. You have this great um, uh, passion for, for uh, imparting wisdom and knowledge. So what about the music? What, what point did you start saying, hey, I can utilize music in a way that helps to put me in the place where I can help take this to the children? Right. Right, so where did this come from? I went to Trinity Western University for my undergrad in business and political science. So I was going to go back to Ottawa and run for prime minister of Canada. That was my goal. Then I went and did my master's degree in Virginia 
for a biblical worldview at Regent University of Law and Government. So I wanted to go to a big fancy school like Harvard, you know, because I'd gone to a small Christian college in Canada. But the dean said to me, Judy, yes, you can go to Harvard, but come here first to get that biblical grid through which to pass the information, the biblical sunglasses, the biblical worldview. So I did a master's degree in law and government. All of my papers were foreign policy, domestic policy, economic policy. I just felt God's call in my life to impact the culture for Christ. Mm -hmm. And then something happened. I was interviewed on the 700 Club. You've heard of the 700 Club? Oh, yeah. With Pat Roberts and stuff. Mm -hmm. So her name was Terry Mewson, and she was the co-host of the 700 Club, 100 Club, beautiful former Miss America. And she was interviewing me, and then she said, Judy, I love what you were, oh, I know. I had started teaching to pay the bill because I was down in the States. I had started teaching modeling classes because I used to model in Paris. And I started teaching workshops for teenage girls on inner and outer beauty just because it was fun and helping these teenage girls learn beauty and character. And she said to me, Judy, I love what you are doing with these teenage girls. But may I encourage you to reach the kids? May I encourage you to expand what you are doing to take it down to the kids and get the boys. You've got to make it cool for the boys. And um, she said, may I encourage you to consider teaching manners as a way of teaching character? Mm. Well, that was, I hadn't even thought of that. But you know what? She gave me a challenge. And so I got a little books, you know, books and books and books on teaching manners out of the library. It was like kind of a no-brainer. And I thought, this is boring. You know, no kid's going to want to listen. Boys, come on, it's boring. And it's got to be fun. Yeah, right? Yeah. Aristotle said, that which is learned with laughter will never be forget forgotten. And I would add music. Music, you know, anyway, all the little jingles. Look at, look at Madison Avenue. They know the power of a jingle, a little ditty, right? We all remember the little ditties, you know, for little things that we want to buy. Anyway, so I, I accepted her challenge. And then... I said, let's not, let's make it fun. Let's call it a club. Yeah. <laughs> and we called it the Manners Club. Well, if you're going to have a club, you need to have a pledge. So I basically took the Ten Commandments and made it into the Good Manners Pledge. Well, honor my parents, tell the truth, don't lie, don't steal, don't, you know, honor my mother and father. Um, I'll respect other people's property. I'll respect the environment. And by having good manners and living by the golden rule, I'll make the world a nicer place to live. That's basically the pledge. I have a preschool version and a high school, a, a, a middle school version. Anyway, now kids around the world are saying the Good Manners Pledge. And by making it fun, well then, if we're gonna have a club, we need music. That's it, Cheryl. We needed music. And so, cause I grew up at Pioneer Girls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, they all have music songs. Camp Minioe, Teen sure. Ranch, you know, we all have music, right? And so I started out using many songs from child evangelism songs. So one of them, I was using this one. It was called, work on your attitudes the way you know you should. Put aside those selfish thoughts and think only on good. Check all your motives, make sure they pass the test and the Lord will help you to do your very best. <laughs> so anyway, I was, then I was using Steve Green songs. Right. You know, he had a beautiful golden rule song. Yes. yes. And, and so I love because it's scripture to music. And Bruce Stacy hadn't written his beautiful God Rock songs yet. A little yeah. shout out to Bruce. Bruce, God bless you, brother. And Elaine. Anyway, um, so I started writing all these songs. And then I was asked to be on uh, CBS This Morning. Then suddenly it was on cover the Boston Globe and cover the Christian Science Modern. And it dawned on me that if maybe the Lord would bless this and it would grow, kind of be famous, I'd have to call and ask all those people permission to write their, use their music. That's too much work. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. So, write your own. <laughs> so, so Dale, what happened was, I, I was living in Boston, Quincy, Massachusetts. I called up my mom in Oakville. says, Mom, I'm going to sing some little ditties, some little songs on your answering machine. Don't erase it. I haven't written it down yet. So I had a little song about respect, a little song called The Five Fabulous Phrases, a little song called Obey Your Mom and Dad, my version. You know, and that became it. And then when we moved to Vancouver for my husband to teach film at Trinity Western, someone said, you know, I was just playing the piano, going to schools, doing my little concerts. Someone said, Judy, you need a CD. But see, I'm from the era where only famous people had CDs. And so they said, well, I know a producer, Roy Salmond. He's from Nashville, he's in Surrey. You might know Roy, he's awesome. 
And uh, we raised the money. He said, Judy, I love your vision. I love your mission. It's entertainment with a purpose. You want to reach kids with an awesome message. And we raised and we did a professional, you know, we did a professional Disney quality CD yeah, called Judy did. the Matter CD. Mm -hmm. And that's, if that can be any encouragement, make it Disney quality. Cause you know, in the seventies kind of Christian stuff was maybe more sloppy a little bit. It's the kids, the competition is Nickelodeon. It's Disney. It's all this stuff. So it's got to be for the glory of God. Awesome. And cutting edge. So that's kind of how it started. And it just kind of grew from there. When I launched, I was up at this, I, I sent out a little press release. This is how it started. A little press release. I took my son to swimming at the Langley pool and he's there soaking wet. I get a call from the Vancouver sun we want to do a story on you for the cover. What? Yeah. So they sent a reporter, we're at the pools, the kid's hair is wet, but right there it was on the cover of the Vancouver Sun, and in the next four weeks, it was on the cover of 14 regional papers. Langley, Port Coquitlam, Burnaby, Surrey, Abbotsford, you know? Yeah. You know, and that's of course before the internet really, is before we yeah, knew. Yeah, true. Yeah. So, time. you know, I didn't even have a website, right now we're redoing it, but you know, thank you for this opportunity. I just want to encourage people, please write for the children. Please write exactly. music for the children. Exactly. When we're talking about writing, is there, um, is there any uh, formal training that you took, perhaps, maybe an early child education, perhaps, or, like, when it comes to songwriting, is there, like... Absolutely. I'm a mom. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I have my master's degree, you know, but what the most important thing for songwriting is your audience. Mm. Who are you writing for? Mm. Who's your market? And what message do you want to give them? And, you know, and praying that God will want to download a message to you and say, Lord, help me communicate this in a winsome, a fun, you know, way that will win the hearts of the kids. And uh, the message is most important. And guess what's unique about this unique thing called the Manners Later, the Manners Club? Every song on my CD is a scripture verse or a scripture principle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. They're all common sense. Mm -hmm. But the song are performed in, when I do concerts for the Baha'i, for Muslims, for Sikhs, for Christians, and the Jewish. You know, every parent wants their kid to have good manners. God's principles are something called common sense. Yeah. Amen. Common sense. And where did common sense come from? Go back to common law. Look at common courtesy comes from common sense then go back to 1215 remember history of the king john and the magna carta common law the common law was so common it wasn't even written down and so everybody knew the common law canada canada america australia new zealand and england they're all based on common law so the reason this resonates around the world is from the lord common law common courtesy common sense you know, so I encourage your, your artists, write for the kids. What message do you want to give the kids? Is it about what real love is? Is it about being a true friend? About, you know, anti-bullying? You know, many of these words that we grew up with in Sunday school, inclusion, anti-bullying, those are words that have kind of been hijacked by a certain community, right? Those words actually belong to God. Yeah. And so we want true inclusion for everyone. In fact, I have a song. I can say hi in 45 languages. So it became a hobby. I was at a Leafs game, sat beside someone from Sweden. I said, oh, how do you say hi in Sweden? So then I started keeping notes. How do you sign Portuguese? How do you sign Filipino? How do you... So it became a hobby. And that became one of my songs called How to Say. It's called Let's Say Hello to All the World. And we used it as the theme for the Olympics in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, Judy Vankovic is our guest, the CEO of the Manners Club. And we are having a lot of fun. We're going to be talking a bit more about how songs are written and stuff but yeah. just for just for one more question is about when you're going into performance um yeah. for churches and the public schools you say they're different audiences so um does it would probably change how you speak between absolutely um, so yeah. so but, uh, how does it affect your writing uh, if knowing that's your market and we want to just encourage those people at home uh before you go anywhere share this experience let people know if you, if you like what you're seeing, they might like it too. It'd be nice to have them jump on and check out our videos up on the GMI Hub online on our YouTube channel. We have a plethora of interviews. We'd love you guys to check out. So, yep, let's go into that question if I could. Well, and first of all, I just want to thank Cheryl for being obedient to that vision you had to bring Christian artists together. Mm -hmm. That we need to, number one, know each other. Number two, we need to be friends. 
we need to support each other. If we have an album coming out or a book coming out or you have a concert coming up, we need to cross promote each other's concerts. Exactly. And the other thing is we need a prayer covering for us as artists, you know, and, um, and there's no, no matter where you are in your musical career, you never know if that kid in your youth group is going to be, look what God's done in Justin Bieber's life right? Like he's been on a journey. His mother yeah. said, please pray for my son. Mm -hmm. You never know when that scrawny kid is. And so just what, well, if I'm on this line, cause I, I didn't want to forget this. I made a commitment to myself, Dale, cause I love going to conferences, Washington, DC, Ottawa, you know, I love music conferences, political conferences. I'm never going to go again without taking at least one to five young people with me. Mm -hmm. We've got to be mentoring those coming yeah. alongside. Mm. And I don't feel old. I feel like I just graduated from Trinity and Regent. And I feel like I'm just starting my career. You know, suddenly my daughter had a baby and I'm a grandma and I'm loving it. Just loving this new season of my life, which is a new motivation for new songs. Yeah. Yeah. But we've got to be taking our high school youth kids along with us to do our techie, to help say, you know what? You are so smart with social media. Would you help me with my Facebook page? Would you help me with Instagram? I mean, I'm terrible. I don't have an Instagram, Twitter. But we need to have a voice in the culture. And have you heard of the seven mountains of the culture? Have you guys heard that term? So Campus Crusade for Christ, Bill Bright, and the guy from YWEN, Lauren Cunningham. God gave both of them a vision of, for Lauren Cunningham, I think it was consent, seven concentric circles of the culture. Bill Bright had seven mountains of the culture. And if we as Christian singers are not at the top, of that cultural mountain, we're not going to be relevant in impacting our culture, the schools or the radio stations or whatever. So we need to strive to be the best for God's glory, the best in music. My husband's a screenwriter, Lord willing, his new movie will have a great release, Lord willing. You know, um, if you're going to be, we should be running for school board, we should be running for city council, we should be praying for them first. And then if there's no one representing us, we need to have someone running. Um, run for mayor, run for MP, run, that's the government mountain. What about the education mountain, you know, be on school board. What about the business mountain, that pray for our businessmen in our churches, that they will be successful. So they can help sponsor us. <laughs> okay. and, and one little tip for me, how in the world did I raise $25,000 to do my initial CD, right? Roy Salmon is a professional studio guy. He's hired professional studio musicians. I was thankful for Imago. Do you guys know about Imago? Yep. Yeah. So I got to be an Imago project. Mm. And so to raise money, the donors got a tax deductible donation. And I eventually paid them all back, actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to, but I wanted to through my earnings. So, you know, also, you know, what's that service the Canadian government has for touring? Um, mm. I don't know. The, anyway, there, there's money out there, you guys. The secular world is getting tour money, development money, competition money, songwriting money, album pr producer money. You know, I applied for it back in 2001, but I haven't even thought about it till this a few months ago. That all this money is being given away. Why don't we, it's our taxpayer dollars. We might as well get part of the pie. We're Christian singers, unashamedly. All you right. know, I do go to both markets. So you did ask about the schools. Preparation for a school concert or church concert is the same. Each of us, I encourage each of you, you're singer, Cheryl, Dale, you're in the music business. We need a prayer team. Do not dare go out into the war zone without a prayer covering, without that full armor of God. You know, I actually have a, a picture from my kid's room of the full armor of God somewhere here, you know, that, that we need to be prepared. This is not, these are not normal times. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're in the church or in the public school. These kids are bombasted with messages that are confusing their head. Um, even some Christian schools are teaching about evolution. You know, they're teaching that, um, that the, some little blob of, of blob crawled out of some primordial stew and maybe grew a fin and maybe grew into a dinosaur and then maybe grew into a gorilla and then maybe grew into my son. You know, <laughs> now he's a monkey. <laughs> but you know, these kids are being taught that they evolved. No wonder that they've got such despair in our kids. Suicide rate is off the charts. Um, they, they have no purpose. They have no meaning because they're just being told that they're an accident. So it, so it sounds like to me that that gives you purpose for the words you're writing. Yeah. You know, like the, the, they're not 
uh, like, let's all sing and have happy songs, but it's more like you're taking intentional teaching moments, uh, opportunities to, uh, to speak into people's lives and using music to do that. So let me jump in there. Like, how do we write these songs for kids, especially now? When, like you said, Judy, there's so many crazy messages that the kids are being bombarded yes. with. Yes. And yes, they are sitting there confused. They're sitting there going, how does this fit with that? I'm told this at home. You're telling me this at school. How does it all fit? How do and you, you, can, you can do it subtle. You can even throw a word like created, you know, instead of, you know, you're created to do great things and have a dream, you know, where did you get that dream? Think about a song I learned as a little kid. I grew up in the Bill Gaither generation, right? So that was kind of the beginning of contemporary Christian music. <laughs> My sisters and I, four Johnson sisters, we were like the youngest people at the Bill Gaither concert at Pacific Stadium because <laughs> we love all those songs and Doug Oldham. But look at this song that I grew up with. <clears throat> it said, I'm something special. I'm the only one of my kind. God gave me a body and a bright, healthy mind. I, well, I probably grew up with a really big head, you know, thinking <laughs> I, God created, you know, I really did. I, I grew up thinking like I'd come home to Oakville, home of the manners lady, you know. <laughs> so, 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 um, but you know, like to have a dream and to know I'm created with what? A purpose. Mm -hmm. And I'm not an accident. Dale, yeah. do you know what they're teaching in British Columbia schools? And I know with the Kathleen Wynne sex education in Ontario, they're singing this song. It goes like this. I can be a boy or I can be a girl. You know, I can be anything I want to be. Are you kidding me? And this little boy at a Deercroft school from on Lakeshore Road, he comes home and he says to his lovely Chinese mother, guess what, mom? I can be a boy or I can be a girl. She goes, no, you can't. So this is filtered down to kindergarten. Mm. They are teaching but that, but that shows you how, how powerful music can be as a tool used to help children to nurture, marinate on the word. So I, I think that if you're out there listening right now, how important your job as a songwriter is, is imperative, especially for children. Wow. Well, and Dale, you've mm. had that vision for children for a long time. And I just so embrace that and celebrate that in you. And and if you, and if I can have even a message to all you songwriters out there, if you're one of those really cool singers that usually write for teenagers, or maybe you do worship for seniors or whatever, whoever you are, may I encourage you just to ask the Lord to give you one song, mm. one song. Maybe Dale, we can sponsor a children's song contest, you oh. know? And, and <laughs> awesome. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So and, much. And, and, and it has to have, you know, a, a, a Christian, based on a Christian Bible verse or principle. So every single one of my songs is either scripture to music or a principle. So it's got the golden rule wrap, the five fabulous yes. phrases, the bad manners, monsters, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Um, everyone needs to be, feel special, you know? Um, in fact, my, my new book. Oh yeah. So encouraging artists, if you're going to write a song, you might as well write a book at the same time. I'm learning this. I'm on a huge learning curve. But you can upload, you can write a book today, have someone design it tomorrow in Mexico, I got a great guy, or India, and upload it to Kindle tomorrow. So it used to be you had to buy 25,000 copies of your book. Yeah. Right, for <laughs> yeah. right. So for example, if I, may I share an example? Um, one of the favorite songs on my CD is called The Bad Manners Monsters. Yes. Yes. Okay, you remember that one? Yes, of course, the Grouchy Rouchy. Oh. I know all about it. <laughs> yeah, so... This song, we said, well, let's write a children's book about it called The Bad Manners Monsters and The Kindness Keys. And so this is the one Lord willing will release pretty soon on Amazon. And if I may, maybe we can get the link to your people. And okay, now here's the game. Talk about helping each other. Like a huge favor to help me. You have to have 50 Amazon verified reviews. So for 99 cents, we'll do an initial launch for 99 cents. You know, if I could ask a favor, if people would be willing to pay 99 cents, download this picture book and write a review. Yes. That's what That's we need good. to do for each other. That's good. Yeah. So um, anyway, and if anyone wants a copy, I'd love to send you a PDF of it. And, you know, you can think about it. And basically these kids, what does the Bible say? Go, well, here's my principle. Okay. Your, your song has to be intentional. No time for silly stuff <laughs> right now. But um, the Bible says, take every thought captive under jesus christ we have to capture the monsters that have been let loose 
in Toronto, in Portland, Oregon, in Washington, DC, in Michigan. So these are the bad manners monsters and these two little kids, they see the chaos in the town and they say, mom and dad, the monsters must be here. And sure enough, they see whiny rhino hiding behind the slide. Sure enough, they see grouchy grouchy causing those kids to be bullies and mean, you know, and then messy Bessie's encouraging everyone to litter. Mm -hmm. And who's the next one? Oh, <laughs> Slobberoo is just disgusting, you know, at the table. And you now, know, who did the um, illustrations for you there, Judy? I have a fabulous animator. You guys, there are great illustrators out there. Let's use them. This is a beautiful Christian animator. He works as an animation. And I said, what would these monsters look like if I gave them the names Grouchy Roachy, Messy Bessie, right. Whiny Right? Right? And also in illustrators, there's a way you can go online and, and get bids from illustrators in India, Pakistan, the Philippines. And for a couple of hundred dollars, you have a book illustrated. You know, my first book, I paid 5000 for the illustrations. Mm -hmm. and now you can get them done just as good. See, the police, the police take the monsters to jail. Each one, they're captured when they use the kindness oh, cool. key. And, and, you know, again, so that's an allegory, you know, I can't, not to be presumptuous, but kind of like a C.S. Lewis version, an allegory with this heavenly meaning. But this is delightful. And we're going to release it in Spanish and French at the same time. So, again, if you're going to write a song, do it in Spanish and French and reach more people with this message. Again, the music is, is important, but the lyrics that are part of it. So let's talk about lyrics a little bit. Um, yeah. When, when, you, when you're writing a song and you have a certain premise, um, are you concerned about um, repeating yourself or saying things that you said already in the first verse, saying it again? Are you concerned about um, making the, the patterns? Like, tell me what things go into your process. Oh rhythm patterns funny words you know um rhyming you know like the bad manners monsters are common to town the bad manners monsters are lurking around right. they're looking for someone with a bad attitude so don't be fooled they'll only make you rude so it rhymes it's cute i've even had kids use it for a poetry contest at school but well, you're looking at, at rhyme, but you're also looking for content in in the sense of not saying the same thing but saying uh, a variety of things that pertain to the same topic. Maybe a few different ways. Yeah. Okay. And you know what else, Dale? Um, telling a story. Telling a story. Mm -hmm. The place, mm -hmm. the story can be, look at Avril Lavigne. One of her songs was about the boy that was teasing, something about the boy and the bus. I forget the song, but I loved it. I loved the story. Um, but as an artist, you need to be prepared, not just for the recording, but for on stage. Right. So either to tell a story leading into your song, or a story come out and give your song and as a bridge to the next song. When you're talking about that songwriting and the focus of your primary message. When you get to the front of the audience, maybe it's a secular audience or a Christian audience, um, that song could be, it mean different things to different audience. So you, you as, a, as a performer have to get your intro, your message across and then perform the song. So for you as an artist, it, how difficult is or how different is that for you as far as addressing the same song and your different your different God, mindset? God will give you the words. You say, Lord, I have the words. Help me to be a blessing to the audience. You know who is in the school gym of five hundred kids. You know who is in this audience of you know, it could be fifty kids at an Awanas club. It could be hundred and fifty at a Sunday night church service. <laughs> Not too many churches have Sunday night churches anymore. I, I miss that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Although it was always in the middle of wonderful world of Disney. That was annoying. <laughs> That's true. We were growing up. I don't want to go to church. But okay, let's get into the International Children's Network a little bit later. Uh, maybe uh, I'll tell you all about that. I'm excited about that. But before we do, I want to remind everybody we are uh, on the GMI Hub online right now. Judy Venkovich here. She's a child entertainer, I guess you could say, but also um, she's the, the CEO of the Manners Club. And so with, with, uh, with the Manners lady as her, uh, her, her, how would you call it, her badge that she wears, it's something that it's helping young children to understand what it means to be kind and understand what it is to be respectful of others. And that principle applies across a all genres and all different uh, secular or Christian and different religions. It doesn't matter those principles really apply. So we're so grateful to have Judy with us today. Um, we're talking about songwriting in particular because um, those who you are uh, songwriters, um, maybe you're, you're, you're thinking, I got a passion for children, but what can that do? How can I do that through my music? Well, we're talking about creativity. We're talking about writing and keeping um, the themes and purposes and thinking about your audience. 
uh, as Judy was saying earlier, we're talking about uh, your demographic, your, your audience, and think about what would best suit their, uh, or tickle their, 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 uh, their senses to, to listen to your music and, and to enjoy it. But not only that, um, to get the, something valuable, something that means something, and they can marinate on, and, and uh, it's something that's healthy for them. And so there's some great, great conversational parts we're having here. And if you are enjoying this, please share this experience. Let people know. Um, <laughs> yeah, let people know so that, you know, they can in, in also uh, enjoy it as well. That's the, the, the gospel so, music. Dale, yes, you, sir. You asked about songwriting. Yeah, we are. We're talking about so, songwriting. So the most important thing for me is the message. So mm -hmm. when I started, I thought, what are the principles that we as parents want our children to grasp. In fact, I didn't have kids yet when I started this, but the kids I was working with, um, and now I have three great kids and a little grandson. So what are the principles? What does every kid need to know? And so, you know, for you guys, you could take a theme like the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, blessed are the, you know, or take a theme like the 10 commandments. You can take a theme like ways of being kind. You could take a theme. So think of the theme as you're writing a song and write a few songs even around that theme. So what I did was, I thought, well, my mother had told me to imagine everyone we meet is wearing a giant invisible sign around their neck that says, make me feel special, right? So your mother, your father, the crosswalk lady, the lady at McDonald's, everyone we meet is wearing this, this big sign. So I knew this concept. You know, the Bible says to put other people first and, you know, don't think of others more highly than yourself. So I wrote a song called Everyone needs to feel special. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to feel good. They need somebody who will appreciate them. They wish somebody would, right? The golden rule, another principle. If you want to be really cool, then you got to know the golden rule. So the kids love, you know, rapping. Um, oh, there's the golden rule. You know, um, it's really important to have happy eyes. You know, so, so we took the song, Let's Go to the Hoppo Baby and called it, wear those happy eyes, everybody, wear those happy eyes. We're all glad when you're not mad, happy eyes. You know, and Roy Salmon is such a great, great producer. What about being thankfulness? There's another theme. So we called it an attitude of gratitude. So I'd use the child evangelism song until I came up with my own. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you want a good attitude, if you want a good attitude, then show a little gratitude. Goodness gracious gratitude. So goodness gracious, great balls of fire. But right. you know, if you, yeah. take, if you take off on an other theme, you just need to make sure that no four notes are the same as another person's song. Okay. So that's, that's interesting. Say that again, please. I believe it's four notes or five notes in a row that cannot be exactly the same. So here's my situation. I had recorded my album, ready to release it. And one of my songs is, I'm going to wash those germs right off of my hands and send them down the drain. Remember that song? I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair. Yeah, that's that commercial. I got right? to wash so that is, man right out of my hair. Yes, I totally know Right, that. so my song is, I'm going to wash those germs right off of my hands. I'm going to wash those germs right off of my hands. Yeah, so yeah. I had to go back into, the, because I, I wrote them, Rogers and Hammerstein. Mm -hmm. and ask permission in New York City if I could use their song. And guess what they said? No. <laughs> so I had to pay for studio time to go back in and re-record those little ditties, you know? You, you've hit on an interesting topic because there are some artists or some writers out there that maybe need some inspiration. And what Judy's talking about is find an existing song, something that you think uh, uh, helps you to be motivated then you can use that as a uh, um, kind of a, um, a measuring stick for the song you want to write. Wow. It's a, te it's a technique that it's, it's been taught um, by many writers is to take a song and listen to the, the, the way it's broken down to the chord progression and the timing of the words and try and repeat that with different words. And then when the words are done, take this music and try play a different music score underneath your words and you have a totally different song but you're using a song to help you build your own. And a song that's already famous, so you know it's gonna work. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> that's true. That. Song's already, I you've already known. Dale, yeah. Dale, I did that. I was with my daughter, we're working out at the gym on Vancouver Island, and Madonna's song, Material Girl, was playing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this song is horrible. Yeah. This is horrible. So I went back with my daughter, I think she was 12, Lexi was 12 at the time, and I wrote a song called Spiritual Girl, using the same rhythm, 
right. about, and actually maybe some of your um, musicians out there could help me because I don't have a tune yet for this song, but it is a very important song for preteen girls. Mm. I want to be a spiritual girl, you know, and it's actually, I think the lyrics I've written are great, but it's just kind of sitting on my computer. <laughs> right. But that's, you know, that's actually an example of something I did. Here's another one, the five fabulous phrases that can change the world. Here's another one, you know, R-E-S-D. Okay, here's, here's, yeah, yeah, here's uh, yeah. Aretha Franklin's yeah. song. Yeah. And my producer said, well, Judy, you need a song about respect. So we took Aretha, you know, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, you know? So mine is R-E-S-P-E-C-T, everybody wants it. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs a little respect. Your family needs respect, oh yeah. You better not forget to respect your dad and respect your mom. Then you'll have a happy home. That's respect, that's respect. Everybody needs a little respect. They love it in French. So people, hang on, Judy. Everybody, everybody at home is is wondering where is she getting all these visuals. Well, let me tell you, Judy has a live show which she does and performs around schools and churches, and she has all these visual aids to help the kids to sing along. So that's why she's showing to them. So think about this as an artist. You can maybe steal or borrow some of the ideas that Judy's able to do with visually bringing your song to the stage. Yeah. Um, now, some people might use an overhead projector or whatever, but the idea is you want the kids to connect with the music and they'll be able to take that home with them because they may not remember everything they hear, but they will remember what they see a lot better. So it's good to use that in combination. So. Um, if you don't can mind, I share, where, can I share where I got that idea from? Yeah, go ahead, please. So at Backyard Bible Clubs and Child Evangelism, my mother would have children, the shyest little child. They would not say a word in class, but they can hold a sign. Yeah, so, yeah, they can stand up at the and front. And who would like to help? Is there yeah. anyone that would like to help? everybody's hand great one two three four come on up yeah. come on up and you can hold fuzzy fuzzy heart or you can hold the sign and the shyest person and those kids would go home mom guess what i want to go up on the stage at school or the teacher you know i got to go up with the manners lady and so you know lord people have different ways of connecting and some mm -hmm. people will be mm -hmm. auditory some will be tactile some will be the hug oh a hug Let's not go. I am so done with this social distance thing. How terrible. <laughs> I want a hug. For, yeah, no. For these children yeah. to so, grow up with that horrible word. Yeah. It is not from the Lord. I call it anti-social distancing. Anyway, so let's get on to talking about the ICCN, if we could. Um, I'm excited about this. So talk a little bit about it, and then we'll move on to uh, another So thing. I would love to invite everyone on this call, everyone that's a part of Gospel Hub, to be part of the International Children's Christian Network. We are so selfish here in Ontario, in British Columbia, in Canada, America. We have so much. You know, in the last six months, I think one of the best things that come out of this COVID season is I have had the privilege of preaching and singing and doing concerts in Pakistan, in Philippines, just like we're doing now. And you know, one by one, these little kids at the brick factory, okay, in brick, the brick factory, these little kids are on the dirt, a hundred of them with their parents, you know, and I said, I would love to meet each one of you. So they come up to the screen, just like we're looking in the screen, they go, hi, Judy, you know, and, and I would have the teacher tell me their name. So for them to have a North American, a, a white person, who cares, mm -hmm. whoever, someone that cares about them, that knows their name. And I've actually had most of their names written out before the class starts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what That's a reflection a of God. God knows our name. Mm -hmm. You know, and these little kids are growing up and they don't know God loves them. They don't think anybody loves them. They feel forgotten. But this amazing technology can touch a kid in Pakistan, can mm -hmm. touch a kid in the Philippines or India. And if you're writing music with double meanings and double whatever, even you can uh, sing for a Muslim audience, sing to a, a Sikh audience. They love music. Kids are kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they just mm -hmm. want to laugh and have fun. Life is right. heavy. We can give them joy. We grew up singing that song. I have the joy, 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 joy. You know, we take that for granted. These kids don't have purpose. They don't know. They don't mm -hmm. know they're created by a God who loves them and died for them. So and please also... Learn to share 
the five fab learn to share the the roman road to salvation learn to share the how someone can know the four spiritual laws for kids i call it the five fabulous phrases god loves me and has a plan for my life but number two i have a sin problem and this sin problem separates me from god but good news jesus is the answer to my sin problem and guess what my he died on the cross that's why i have easter and he rose again i love easter eggs but and each of us guess what each of us gets to make a choice we can say yes to god i love you and yes thank you for dying on the cross for my sins or no i don't care i don't care that you love me i don't care no but we can we have the freedom to make that choice and say yes to god or no and how to do a simple prayer of salvation like i prayed as a five-year-old in the farm in bolton with my mother at the kitchen table mm -hmm. uh, let's change gears a little bit and get back to songwriting we're going to yep. if we were if we're talking about a different age group let's say for instance um i was writing, i was like writing songs and it's a pop rock song and that song is to a, dem, de, a demographic that's probably in their late teens or college whatever or maybe even older um when you're approaching a song that's to to your to a child or to a in your opinion would writing a song for children differ in writing a song for an age of a different age of course yeah okay so of course. How? How would that be? Well, they don't have the cognitive understanding to grasp some of the context. And you, you, when you see, okay, here's a horrible example. Okay. I was in grade seven and I'm walking down the hall at Dolphin Senior Public High School and whatever in Streetsville singing, voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Da, da, da. I had no clue what I was singing. These are concepts that are way over the head of a kid, right? Yes. So we need to reach our kids at the level they're at. And these children are listening on their headphones and whatever to horrible music, horrible lyrics. So keep, you know, um, you know, that's a huge, the kids are growing up way too fast, Dale. Yeah. Way too worldly. You know, our own Christian kids are watching the same movies that the, the, the second they're going to sleepovers. No more sleepovers. Don't let them have sleepovers. <laughs> Can I jump in with a question? Um, I'm thinking of, as you, as you were saying that, um, does style as a musical style matter when writing a song for kids? Oh, I think you can have all the genres. Kids are, they love variety. You know, they love reggae. You know, reggae's cool. Take them down and then get yourself booked at the Jamaica Reggae Festival, whatever it is in Caravana, mm -hmm. right? Get our entertainers booked at the Toronto Children's Festival, the Ottawa Children's Festival. Get booked. Yeah. Make sure you make the deadline. Don't, I'm terrible at missing deadlines. You know, look, I didn't get my bio with you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we need to be more organized. You know, we need to treat it seriously for God's glory. We need to be professional. We need a professional website, a professional Facebook page, a, a look at your beautiful GM Hub logo. You know, well done, it's classy. You know, we're, look who we're competing against, Disney, Nickelodeon, or whatever is out there. And let me tell you an example. I, I met with uh, Toronto TV, children's TV, some kids TV show in Toronto, with some producer, some 20 year old millennial. And I met with her and I, I had this whole TV show kind of like, um, um, Zoom meets Mickey Mouse Club, the Manners Club for Kids. It was fabulous, a new Sesame Street. Oh, well, we don't want the kids to actually learn something. Wow. What? That was, that was her response. They just wanted to entertain. Even, even my book, The Bad Manners Monsters, I submitted it for the TD Children's Book Contest. And I just was a little surprised that it it didn't place is a book that we put in all the libraries oh well we don't want them to actually it sounds like you're trying to teach them something i am <laughs> be kind <laughs> use yeah. these tools the kind attitude to, you know the kind words to i mean what, so what, this what? you guys this is the generation we're in and and these kids are becoming scared and, and instead of raising daniels and esters and samson's and elijah's we're raising people these these wimps that need their safe space and their puppy mm -hmm. you know think of 18 year olds that our fathers and grandparents they went to world war one and world war two and 18 year olds and fought for freedom and our kids are home playing video games and you know or out protesting their hurt feelings yeah well as important so as that is that is really important um i, I want to get back to the songwriting <laughs> what process do you go through 
when you're writing a song, like when you, is it music first? Is it, of course, it sounds like lyrics are first for you, but what, um, yeah. what, would, what would be the process? You sit down at your computer or your, how do you start writing a song? Oh, you know, you just brainwave, you just start. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right. You know, some people are better with their pencil. Some people, these millennials are good on their phone or the computer and just spew out every theme that comes around that theme. And even meet with other people and say, I want to write a song on this. What, what comes to your mind around this theme? And they might have a little ditty or whatever. They might have with a rhyming word. I'm working on the French and Spanish now and trying to get, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but I want the, the meaning. Um, yeah, I would start with, with theme, what do you want to get across? Um, although some people, see, it's hard if you come up with a, a, the melody first, but some people are so musical, that's what comes first. Mm. And that's fine. That's their creative style. Yeah. But if it's, a, if you are asking the Lord, Lord, work through my music. Lord, give me a song. Give me a message. Give me a melody. God created melody. God created music. It's a gift. It's all mathematical genius brilliance. He created it because he's a God of order, not confusion. Mm -hmm. And that's why when we hear this chaos, new noise music, we get headaches. So is that, that's your process? That. That, that's your huh? process for you? That's your process then? Well, get... interesting. Interesting you'd ask that because I never set out to be a songwriter. Right. I actually only have one album. I'm on a mission, right? But Roy said, as soon as I did that, went, okay, now we need a CD for the middle school kids, which I wish I'd done, you know, 10 years ago. Okay, so you know, even the older elementary yeah. grades six and seven, five, six, seven. Because because you, you touched on a topic, we're going to ask. We have this a preloaded question for you because of the niche the topic of the the manners club. Do you feel you have written enough songs to cover this topic, or is there more? Is there something else yet to come? Is there a part two? That's a great idea. In fact, I put on my CD volume one. Yes, <laughs> I did. You know, and I was ready to launch it. I had my whole meeting with Walmart. Walmart was ready to launch my CD, as was Costco. Oh, okay. And um, I met in Mississauga at the big, you know, we had the first one with Rob Boardman, anyway, um, and, and uh, they were ready to, but you know, they can order 10,000 and then ship back 10,000 broken CDs. But look, I wish I'd done it. I wish I'd done the risk. Mm -hmm. I was on that, I was written up in Sam's Club. I was written, that, written up in the Costco magazine. And then my CD wasn't even in it. So I, I think I had way more courage right at the beginning. So I need to pray that I get more courage. And even as I launch this new era of the campaign for kindness is what we're calling it. And if any of the listeners would like me to come to your church or to a school in your neighborhood, often the Rotary Club will sponsor me to come in. But we call well, it- we will, we, will have, we will have your contact information sure. at the end of the video. For so sure. that we can take advantage of the ministry and the, 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 the things yeah, that you I'd love to. Be, and then we can hang out and talk about songwriting. <laughs> Absolutely. That'd be in so fact, cool. in fact, Dale, that's another way that your artists can bless public schools, Christian schools, elementary schools, high schools to come in as a guest speaker about mm -hmm. the songwriting process and yeah. tell, well, this is how I write songs and even encourage them right there in class to do a little lab. You know, and that helps get you known as well. And it gets you out of your house. You guys, you know, artists are sometimes loners. You know, we're creative, we're doing our little music, but it's invigorating to get out and, and perform. I mean, look at, when I do a concert, I just come home and I'm just so pumped. I'm on top yeah. of the world, I'm energized. And that reminds me that, wow, this is important what I'm doing. And so, you know, find creative ways of doing concerts. And you can do, oh, house concerts are a new big thing. Yeah. yeah. And do a FaceTime live even from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And be a blessing. Say, you know what? Is anything anyone got anything going on in your life today that we can pray for? Like I would just love to pray for you. And for you to pray over a fifth grader, that could change their life forever. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, or even my language is song, because I've got the song How to Say Hi in Twelve Languages. And there was a Korean lady at the back of the school at this Winnipeg school, and she was crying when she came up. She goes, you were the first person that honored, you know, used my language and taught the whole school how to say, you know, in Korean. And she was just so touched. You, you entered that, her world a little bit. That's interesting. I have a, a couple more questions for you, if I can ask. Um, and <laughs> I the reason, 
And the reason is because I'm getting questions from our audience and, and I haven't been able, uh, you've been, you've been sharing so much valuable stuff. I just didn't want to interrupt you all. <laughs> Um, one of the questions that came was about um, the use of uh, earlier in the early in the conversation. You talked about songs that you learned when you were younger, or with with the Gaithers and so forth. And then we talked about being relevant. How can people use songs from the past and bring them relevant? Or do you think that is even worthy to do that? That's such a great question. Let me tell you why. I was up at Muskoka with my sister up at Mary Lake and we were singing our old Mary Minioe songs, right? And then we started singing, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And then we were singing, you know, um, um, some of the Andre Crouch songs. And some of those songs are so beautiful, but this generation doesn't know them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm convinced mm -hmm. that if some of these cool worship leaders would go back to the seventies, and get some of those beautiful songs. You know, remember through it all, yeah. through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Absolutely. I've learned to trust in God. Andre Crouch was amazing, yeah. right? So that was one thing. Also, our little Sunday school songs, some of them were kind of dumb, you know, climb, climb up, sunshine mountain, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, deep and wide, deep and wide. Mm -hmm. But Bible verses to music. Bible, you know, right to some, anyone can take a scripture and put music to it. It's public domain. Do it, right? Do it. I would do that first. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Every Sunday school would want your music. Every Awana wants your music. Every, you know, Pioneer Girl wants your music. So put scripture to music, put prayers to music. I love Steve Breen's song even, when I am afraid, I will trust in thee. I, I had a little girl for a sleepover and I hear her singing this song upstairs like, are you okay, honey? And her mom came and picked her up, you know, no sleepovers. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so scripture to music and also think about, um, uh, is it Jesus loves me, this I know or something. A lot of those songs were bar songs. Have you heard that deal? Yeah, a well, lot of those most of our hymns, most of our hymns and our hymn books came from old drinking songs. And it, that's it. it. It's because they're they were relevant in the time, and people who were in the church wanted them to sing, and they wanted to know the song melody. So the words were something they, they, they didn't have PowerPoint projectors. They didn't have screen, so they wanted people to kind of know the melody. But they would say the words, and everybody would be able to sing along. And that was the reason for it. And there's, I don't believe it's any different today. We should be making music that people want to hear or are, are, are understanding. So anyway, I'll stop talking. No, I agree. And I would love to put one more plug. I heard about Kristen Getty. Have you heard about Kristen Getty oh. and the Getty Music Festival? We should all go. My sister paid like $99 for international rate to go to this conference, maybe in Nashville, and it was going to be live. And then because of COVID, they made it online, which is no fun, but they still did it. Um, this, there, there's something called the worship wars hmm. and you know, we need to get back to biblical doctrine in our songs, you know, like, oh, the reckless love of Jesus. Well, why is the rec why is this God's love reckless? You know, like get back to doctrine in your songs and be intentional. And I remember at Chartwell Baptist church, you know, my father used to lead the hymns like this to yes, God I know. <laughs> be yeah. the glory, you know, well, and he was kind of displaced and he and his violin with the worship team and the guitars. Well, then daddy would say, well, why can they only sing verse one and four of this hymn, but they can sing all 20 verses over and over and over and over and over again, you know, repeat the same verse 20 time of that worship course, yeah. which yeah. the worship courses are beautiful, but you can't, I mean, the churches are even getting rid of their hymn books. Yeah. No, go find them. People love an old-fashioned hymn sing, and I have a little blessing. If you guys get out here, and Gail, I don't know if you ever saw my mom's grand piano, but my mom went to be the, with the Lord in, in January, and her grand piano just arrived at my house and was oh, assembled. Oh, that's so, so nice. You're all invited over oh, for an old-fashioned hymn sing so at cool. my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Wonderful. I got, little, I got a little piano beside me, but it's not There's something. Place. Please get a real piano. Get a real piano. <laughs> Keyboards are good. Hey. Keyboard, it hurts my heart. Oh, well, I'm not very techy, so I don't know how to use those. You're way better. But there's something about music. You know, kids aren't singing. They're not learning harmony. 
Yeah. You know, uh, some are taking band, which is good, but keep your kids in music, you guys. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, another question, um, and you kind of touched on it. Um, some of the songs that are being created today are songs that are primarily for adults, but some companies or some people, some artists, I'm not sure who does it, takes these songs that are existing for adults and they turn them around and, you know, re-record it with kids singing them. Yeah, the pop, the kids pop CDs and stuff. Yes. Like. Yeah. So, so what's your opinion about that? Do, do you feel that that's an effective way of also teaching the kids music as well? Sure. Or, sure. Yeah. Kids are smart. You know, they love to feel grown up and, um, you know, I'll just remember, there's not a kid's Holy Spirit and a grown-up Holy Spirit. There's just one. And God can work through kids, adults, and, and he can prophesy through these adults. He can speak truth through these children, I mean. But one of the albums I was going to do, but if you do it first, please get it done. There's not going to be enough. Um, I want to do kids sing Grandma's Favorite Hymns, you know? Mm -hmm. Grandma's favorite hymns. And yeah. what are like 10 of the most important hymns? There's Amazing Grace. There's How Great Thou Art. There's, you know, um, And Can It Be, whatever. There's, you know, some classics. Yeah. That, it goes on and on. There's lots of them, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. volume one, volume two. Yeah. And just, even, even if, see, and you know, we can record things so much less expensive now than in the olden days. Mm -hmm. You can go to your garage and do it. Yes, yes. Not almost, but you know, hire a professional to do the engineering. But it's Definitely. technology is a gift. Let's use it. Mm -hmm. You know, find a good engineer and spread the word about him, him or her, if she can help you. If you've got a good designer, let us know. And maybe in this co-op, I love your themes. Can you remind me of the four themes of the purpose of GM yeah. Network? Community, community mentorship and talent growth. In those four aspects, we hope to inspire and help others to grow in their music ministry. Right. I love that. Friendship. We need friends. We need to know. I would love to know other Christians. I went to the Covenant Awards. Well, my sister picked up. Oh, let me show you. Ta-da! Covenant Award. <laughs> <laughs> Covenant Award. No but problem. my mom and That's sister. Awesome. It was a snowstorm in Barrie that year. But I did go to the one in Calgary. And it was just so fun. We need networking. We need to pray. Yes. We need to encourage each other and share resources because we're there's so few of us. And yeah. then not just for us to be mentored, but for us to mentor others. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's very important. So important. And that's our heartbeat. That's exactly what we want to encourage. Um, you just spoke it, <laughs> so I don't even have to repeat it. Um, if I can ask one more question. Um, if you had three points, um, three pieces of advice that you would give a songwriter. I know you've given quite a bit already, but if you could summarize or if you have new advice that you would want to give a songwriter set specifically, I'll say called to write songs for children. Wonderful. What would you say to them to encourage them? You know, I was thinking about that because you asked me about that earlier and I was thinking about that. And you know what came first to my mind was prepare your heart. It needs to be, you need to have content in your heart for it to be here and then it'll bubble, bubble, bubble and out your brain or out your pen, your arm. So content, that means stay close to Jesus. That means be in the word and then pray, Lord, let your scripture inspire me with something, let that something jump out of the page. Like, do you guys remember um, um, music machine? Music machine, like no other gadget that you've ever seen. Okay, so music machine was... um. Oh, you would know, Pat Boone. And, 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 you know, it was about the fruit of the spirit. So you throw a fruit in and out comes one of the, a song about one of the fruit of the spirit. I love that. I grew up with that. But you had, so maybe someone was reading about the fruit of the spirit. That's what kids need to learn, right? Yeah, cool. And you need to be relevant. Number two, be in the word and ask God to, in prayer. Number two, be relevant to the culture. You've got to know a biblical worldview. How does God's word apply to the culture? I would encourage you to work, um, uh, sign up for breakpoint.org, Chuck Colson's ministry. And every day, two minutes, a little two minute tidbit about something completely relevant in the culture. Um, I, I actually was, I did my master's degree in biblical worldview for law and government. And so, but that's what, 30 years ago. And so I actually, up and was accepted as a Colson fellow, the Chuck Colson ministry. So you guys could do that. Then you're fellowshipping with other people, sharing ideas. So that my textbook just arrived, one of my textbooks, it's called A Practical Guide to Culture. Helping the next generation navigate today's world. 
and learning the language. Good stuff. That's, what that's about this one? Here's a Glenn Sunshine book that just arrived in my mail today from Amazon. Glenn Sunshine, why do you think the way you do? Again, biblical worldview and how to be relevant. And then once you've got content, it's, it'll come out. It'll come out. So you take care of yourself, your heart, study to show yourself approved. Don't be lazy. Mm -hmm. Writing gets hard work, but it can be fun. So make it fun. And I don't know what number three, what, yeah, make it fun. Number three, just do go. it. Yeah. Just my husband's a screenwriter. You know, he wrote two movie scripts this summer. Some people never finish one. Mm -hmm. He's got one coming out in communism, tortured for his faith. Harlan Papa tortured 13 years for his faith in Bulgarian prison. How do we make that story from 50, 60 years ago relevant to these kids that are going, ooh, socialism, socialism, isn't it so yeah. great? Yeah. Look at Venezuela, right? So again, making your work relevant, for, you know, he's the one that did Superbook and how to make Superbook relevant. And uh, by the way, I would love to connect with you guys on Facebook. I'd love anyone to connect with me on Facebook. That's not how you spell my name. Just drop the R. <laughs> Judy, Judy Johnston Vankovich. <laughs> so, but uh, it's close, but uh, uh, it's fine. And I would just love to, because if we can share ideas, I can encourage any of your artists you know, and they can bounce anything off me. I can bounce it off them. And um, if you're coming on tour to Vancouver, crush at my house. I've got a guest room. I just brought out my old four poster bed from high school. You can have the guest room. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, I respelt the word. So there you go. That's how you properly spell Aren't it. Aren't you clever? You are well, so we, smart. Yep. Yeah. Judy Johnson, well, we, thank you. Thank you. To, we have a link at the end of the video. So people, you get a chance to, to follow or find out more about her ministry. We'll make sure that you connect with her. And uh, we want, I want to take this time on behalf of the GMI Hub to thank you, Judy, for taking your time this evening and being with us as we're, we are a time difference of about three hours, I think, or four yeah. hours. So it's, it's, I just really appreciate the fact that you're, you've done this, this this day for us. Uh, you've been a real blessing. And oh. I like the bit. this is great. Well, you guys are both blessings and your family, your kids were fun to grow up. Now they're young adults and it's been mm -hmm. fun. And you know, uh, Shadara's turned 22. Stop it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, that's a blessing. You know, each phase of their lives. Turned 21, sorry. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we all have seasons of our lives, right? Yeah. Seasons. And just to pray that God will open and close the right doors. But you've got to be a moving train. And people will come alongside you if you're moving. So start something, get something done, get it up on Amazon. There's so many courses online that are free to teach you how to do it, or I'll share what I've been learning. But I would encourage people to write a song and a children's book at the same time. Yeah, you know, and that's really French and Spanish and Arabic and Chinese. And <laughs> <laughs> I um, like that's a reoccurring theme. Cheryl and I have seen that over and over again. Everybody who's talking about writing, so just do it. Just do just it. Just do it. Yeah. That's what our next little clip's going to be. It's going to be, just do it, just do it, just do it, just right. do it. <laughs> do, not, do not be selfish. Do not, do not hide your light under a barrel. And don't wait to be discovered. Put yourself out there. Call your Sunday school teachers and say, you know what? I, I would love to. May I teach Sunday school this week? And I'd love to share a song at open session that I'm working on. Or I'd love to share it and, you know, put up on the PowerPoint or, you know, maybe my song, you know, make some little cute cards. So, I, in fact, I put all the Christmas carols on big uh, cards because right. kids don't know the words to Christmas carols. And I have the children come up and hold the signs. That's very, the whole very gospel is in those Christmas carols. Mm -hmm. Christmas is coming up. You yeah. could write a children's Christmas album. It wouldn't probably be ready for this year. Hmm. But funny you would say that because that's what we're doing. The GMI Hub is putting together a compilation Christmas CD. We've been working on it for the last few months with different artists from different parts of, of Canada, actually, and encouraging them to put their Christmas songs into our compilation CD. Wonderful. And we're hoping I missed, the I missed the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a volume one there, Judy. So we might do a volume two and get you in there. <laughs> well, and, and also there is a, a children's Christmas category album and an adult category that, you know, people, you know, a lot of adults aren't going to listen to kids music. Although a little tip on learning languages, um, whenever I meet someone from another culture, I said, would you teach me one of your favorite children's songs you learned oh. as a child? That's cool. What a great connection. They they love thinking back, especially if the grandma's there with them. You know, what do we have? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, Frere Jaca. 
that's what you learn from other cultures, you know, and uh, then you enter another level of relationship with that person as well. Very cool. It's amazing how music will just bring people together. It is amazing. And you know what, uh, to echo what uh, Dale said earlier, Judy, we thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> you have shared so much. It's awesome having you on board. Yeah, you, you are awesome. It's awesome having you on board. And viewers, we want to thank you for being with us as well. I hope that you did do what Dale said and you did share this experience. Um, we are going to be putting this on YouTube. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, remember to like it. Remember to subscribe. Remember to ring the bell and share this video with others others because as as was said all through this this video through more than one time we need to support one another we need to help one another we need to encourage one another we need to learn from one another that is why gmi hub encourages unity community mentorship and talent growth we will be back next week with a whole different theme but for now thank you and god bless we'll see you next time